Hi, welcome back to my channel. I am here to give you pretty much kind of a rundown for my August wrap up because we're at the middle of the month. I read 57 books in August and how to do a concise video is always a challenge when I do my monthly wrap ups. Now I do realize that we're pushing in on the middle of the month and this, so this review is late as, excuse me, this video is late as well as the fact that I haven't been doing my weekly wrap ups. And that's a shame because I'm definitely reading. In fact, I think I've read 17 books this month. So, you know, I'm definitely getting my reading done. I'm just not able to get here and juggle so many balls, my book reviews, writing the book reviews. So whatever. Let's talk about August. August, I read 57 books. And as of August 31st, my year to date was 393. Now I'm going to go to my spreadsheet, which is Google Sheets, and we are going to update some of these stats according to whatever I have here. So as of when I thought I was going to make the video, I had read 393 books. But as of today, I have read 412 books for 2022. Now, check this out. I had reached my Goodreads goal maybe 10 days ago or 12 days ago. And I was thinking about bringing my goal up, but a very busy YouTuber, booktuber recommended at least leave the goal the same and just watch those numbers do whatever they're going to do. So based on her suggestion, that's exactly what I'm going to do. My Goodreads goal was 400. It is now, I'm now reading book 412 and we're just going to leave it at 400. Now, Remember, everything I tell you pretty much is based on the end of August. So for August, I read 17,745 pages. With that 400, excuse me, 17,745 pages that I read in August, as of the end of October, my year to uh, date page count was 130,845. However, I've read a few more books, so we are going to update that statistic as soon as I can locate it. I'm looking at my summary page on my Google Sheets and it's just hiding from me. Where are you? There we go. As of now, I have read 137,361 pages because since September 1st, I have read another 6,516. So, a rundown. January, I read 51 books. February was a terrible month for me emotionally. I only read 22 books. March, I climbed back up a little bit to 37 books, but it was April that I got my reading mojo back in full force because I was able to read 54 books in April. In May, that was an even better month because I was able to read 62 books. June was 47 books, so it was a little less. And I remember exactly why. I got into a really bad, almost six week long depression in June. So 47 is still a great number, but I know that it was lower than my average. July was a lot better. I jumped back up because I read 63 books in July. And then August, I read 57 books, which is the content of this video. Now, August for me to read 57 books was kind of a, a wow, because with that, I was on vacation for a week. I helped my son, Alan, by babysitting my granddaughter, Lila. I went over and babysat my grandchildren at my at their houses. Like I might go to my oldest daughter's house or my middle daughter's house. But then we turn around to the month of September, whereas as of today, I've read 19 books. I thought I read 16, but I have read 19 books so far in September. So I just wanted to give you those numbers. And yes, this video is all about stats, at least this part of the video. And I, I think I would have made a great statistician Okay, I love numbers. I love the uh, nerdiness of numbers. And 
I like spreadsheets, so that's why you're getting so many numbers. Now, of those 57 books that I read in August, 47 of them were neck alley arcs, which is great because I'm working on trying to raise my neck alley feedback ratio, but it's not happening. I read one print arc in, I know it's in here. I'm looking, I don't see it. It might be uh, Nobody's Princess by Erica Ridley. It's, it's over there. I don't want to reach for it. So I did read one print arc and listen to 15 audiobooks. Now, when I said that I read 47 books from Neck Alley in August, but 15 audiobooks, it's because some of the Neck Alley arcs were audiobook arcs. Now, productivity beyond reading. I had 35 blog posts in August, including 35 blog tours. On Neck Alley itself, I had 32 reviews and on this channel, I made 49 videos. That's all stuff that I did in August. That's it, right? Now, let's talk about my year-to-date favorites. My January favorite was The Dust Bowl Orphans by Suzette D. Harrison. Keep that name in mind. My February favorite, and yes, I am going to bring in screenshots. My February favorite was A Life for a Life by Carol Wire. My March favorite was a print arc, and it was called Love People, Use Things by Joshua Fields, Milborn, and Ryan Nicodemus. My April favorite was Take My Hand by Dolan Perkins Valdez. As a matter of fact, I got a direct message, a DM the other day. Somebody said, Robin, I read your review for Take My Hand. It was a fabulous review, and it really made me think. So I went back to my blog, and I read that review. And you want to know something? I don't even know where this stuff comes from. I wrote that review. Let's see. I said that uh, Take My Hand was my April favorite. So I wrote that review March, April, and somehow or another, the words that I used in that video, I cannot believe come out of this brain up here. And so anyway, so that was my April favorite. My May favorites, plural, were A Mother's Heart by Carmel Harrington and Unbridled Cowboy by Maisie Yates. Why does a 224-page Harlequin romance get a favorite of the month for me? It's because our character had a very specific issue, and I love how that issue was addressed. That is Unbridled Cowboy. My June favorite was By Her Own Design by Piper Hugley. Okay, so that book right there is was just too much. It was absolutely great. Now, July, it looks like I put two favorites for July. I put The Edge of Summer by Viola Shipman and The Last Thing to Burn by Will Dean. Now, Will Dean is a new name for me, but he's not a new name for a lot of other readers. And I do have another book of his in my repertoire or my TBR, and that is called The Firstborn. So I'm going to get that read. My July favorites, favorites, oh, that was my July favorites. My August favorites was plural as well. And that's this video right here. Now, I'm going to give you the runners up, okay, which is My Name is Ona Judge by Suzette D. Harrison. Now, my January favorite was The Dust Bowl Orphans, but now one of my August favorites is My Name is Ona Judge. So I love Suzette D. Harrison. Another favorite of August was Love List and Fancy Ships, and that was by Sarah Grunder Ruiz. But my number one favorite for August was The Lucky One by Jessica Payne. Oh, yeah. A girl escaped a serial killer when she was about 18, 19 years old, 
and now it's five five or ten years later and that serial killer has her in their crosshairs and let me tell you that book was really good so those are my stats those are my favorites and now we're going to just try to get through these 57 books in as much with as much expediency as I can offer you. I read two books by Jen DeLuca. They were well played and well matched. Now I do have, that's I think four and five in a series. I do have one more. I well, well traveled. I haven't read that yet, but I do have that one coming up. Then I read a book that was six, 700 pages that was Quarter to Midnight by Karen Rose. Very gritty, very good, very solid. I, and I love that one. I had a cozy mystery, which was Death at the Crystal Palace by Jennifer Ashley. And I also had The Secret of Bow Lane. By the way, if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my list. Because there's no way I'm going to be able to spit the 57 titles out in the right order with the right name and the right author off the top of my head. Then I had a book that I have to get reviewed. It was 68 pages. It was called Thought by Shantae L. Reed. And Shantae L. Reed was writing an essay. I think her thesis or something along that line. And in the midst of writing this, she hears noise in her apartment building. Well, one of her neighbors was approached by the police and shot dead by the police and that is a historical thing that's in the new that was in the news and we have the book thought now um thought was written the thesis that shantae l reed was writing was based on beloved by tony morrison and she was really into the whole everything behind the book beloved and if you look at the book itself, the book Thought, the 68-page book, there are some screenshots of Shantae L. Reed note-taking and putting tabs in that book, The Beloved. Yes, it's been months and months and months. Well, not months and months, but it's been since early August that I read this book. It feels like it's been months. I should say weeks, but that's Thought. Then I read two books by Joanna Schaffhausen. They were Gone for Good and Long Gone. Now, I had long gone for review, so I went back and read Gone for Good so that I could read that. And that was part of a series that I think will continue, but I'm not 100% sure. Then I read You're Invited by Amanda J. Atissa. That was a... Whoops, that was Siri. You're Invited. That was a really good book because there was a wedding that was about to take place and the person that was invited to the wedding, it wasn't quite sure why she would be invited to her ex's wedding. And so there's drama with that. Then I read The Elephant Girl by James Patterson. And this is more of a middle grade book. And it's about a girl who her parents work on like a safari or some outdoor uh, animal uh sanctuary and how she draw, draws close to elephants and something happens to one of the elephants and it was her relationship it was just the sweetest little book and no i haven't reviewed it my next one was trust by hernan diaz which was a dnf for me but trust keeps coming up on these lists of one of the best books um now trust i believe is three stories so the book is written part one part two and part three i did make it to part two and when i started to read what kind of felt like it was the same i it, it became a dnf for me then i mentioned earlier that one of my favorites was love lists and fancy ships okay by sarah glenda ruiz i also loved her book L luck and last resort so I read those two, and let me tell you, those books were romances, but each of the protagonists had serious issues. One half of the couples in each of those two books had something serious going on. And I love the way that it was addressed in this very short book by Sarah Grunder, Grunder Ruiz, but it was, it was to die for. The next book I read is up there, 
and it was called Nobody's Princess by Erica Ridley. And this was basically someone who had needs to marry for to save a family's fortune. And that was just a cute, I won't say romantic comedy, but definitely a historical fiction, a historical romance. I was just trying to categorize that really quickly. Then I read Send Her Back and Other Stories by Manasha Kasiki. Now, in this book, I think there was 20 to 25 short essays or stories that showed how people became refugees and sent from one country to another and suffered in all kinds of ways. And that was a very, very quick read, maybe just a couple hundred pages. So each story couldn't have been more than three to say 10 pages, but they were really good. So that was sent her back in other stories. Then I read Hidden Bones by Rita Heron, which is part of a series. And I have read, I think all but the first book in that series. And I was glad to have read that because hopefully when the next book comes out, I'll be able to grab it. Now, in the one of the challenges that I'm doing, we have to, we get what's called group reads. The group read for that particular challenge was Tokyo Ever After by Amiko Jean. This is more like a, a YA or NA, young adult or new adult. This was really good, and I'm not sure if it's a series or a trilogy, but there is a second book that I'd like to read. Then I had one of Sue Roberts' books, and Sue Roberts writes the best romance, one of the best romance writers I love, because it's it's always women fiction with a bit of romance, and that was Take a Chance on Greece. And I remember when I was reading this book, I went to Goodreads and I just put in her name under the books that I had read. And it could be France, it could be Italy, it could be the UK. She writes all these books based on location and I love it. Then I had Dreams of Magpie Cove by Kennedy Kerr. And this was a really good book, part of a series. And I love how it's being developed and how each character finds their happily ever after. Then I needed a fantasy book for one of uh, the challenges. Remember, we're talking about challenges. So the fantasy book I chose was Magic Strikes by Elona Andrews. And um, I had already read the first three books in the series. And then Magic Strikes is part of a totally new series. So that was uh, Alona Andrews. And Alona Andrews is a husband and wife writing team there. That's, a, uh, what do you call it? A, a pseudonym. Then I read The, Amange the Arrangement Tr Trilogy by Kirsten Modglin. So when I got to The Atonement, and realized it was book three in a series, I went back and, and I had it as an audiobook arc. Well, I was able to go to my library and get the arrangement and the amendment, also in audiobook format, and read this trilogy. And let me tell you, it was one of those that blows your socks off. It was about a couple who were uh, falling, you know, separating, you know, going, not separating, uh, not having as much in common anymore, not communicating well, they're in a rut and the wife comes up with an arrangement and the arrangement involves turning their marriage into an open marriage, but keeping secrets about any uh, little get togethers one or the other may have with somebody else, but that didn't work. So she changed it and then it became the amendment. The amendment crashed and burned. So then there was the atonement. Excellent, excellent, excellent book. Then I had Local Girl Missing by Lisa Reagan. Definitely part of a great series that I have read all of the books on all of these, I'm pretty sure. Then I had Mr. Perfect on Paper by Jean Meltzer. And this was really good because you had, I think it was a podcaster and the way that the book was written, it was looking for the ideal person and there's really no ideal person. We, we all fall short in one way or another. This was the first book I read, I believe, by Jean P Meltzer, and I really enjoyed it, and I'm definitely going to read more. Then I read a historical fiction called The Last of the Seven by Stephen Hartov. 
and with the last of the seven, there were uh, soldiers that were flying to protect uh, territory. And the last of the soldiers that were in formation, that plane crashed and there was a survivor. The question is, the people that found him, could they keep him safe without betraying him? And then we learn more about his role in the attempts to keep that territory safe. Really, really good book. Then I had A Truth Most Treacherous by Genevieve Essig, which is going to get my favorite cover of the year, most likely. If you look at this cover, which I'm going to pop up here, but if you look at this cover, it's just, I just love it. And I think it's, I'm going to say six or seven in a series, and I have read all of them so far. Then I have The X Between Us by Nicola Marsh. And this was a psychological thriller, really, really, really good book where you have one couple and their life seems to be going okay. And then you have another couple and things aren't quite what they should be. But then there's a division and what causes that division and what happens between that? Well, let me tell you, it's a psychological thriller, so you know it's going to be intense. Then I had The House Share by Carla Kovach. And this was a really good book because you have a girl who had a very bad relationship, got away from her ex, and now she takes residence. She takes residence in a house that was designed, redesigned into smaller apartments. And it's the, um, neighbors that she meets and she gets along with some of them, but there's a mystery neighbor who no one really knows anything about. But while, but while you got that mystery neighbor, you've got drama happening. And with that drama happening, it enters into the four walls of that house in a really, really good book. Then I read a memoir by Jeanette McCurdy, and that was I'm Glad My Mom Died. Now, does the title seem unusual? Of course it does. Is the title relevant? Of course it is. Is it worth reading? Almost oh, definitely. Jeanette McCurdy started off with small roles in Hollywood and eventually landed a role on iKylie, on Nick, Nick, um, Nickelodeon. Now, from a young age, five or six years old, her mother tried to protect, uh, tried to, uh, create this perfect actress that's going to support this family. Why did Jeanette McCurdy name her book, I'm Glad My Mom Died? Well, first of all, her mom did die of breast cancer. The reason that Jeanette is at peace with that is her mother was extremely abusive, very controlling, very demanding, and gave poor Jeanette no freedom, no freedom. And it wasn't until her mother got ill that Janelle, excuse me, that um, Jeanette McCurdy took back her life. And I saw a podcast, and I also know that this is a one woman show. So she narrated this audiobook. I could go, I could wax poetic about that for an hour. Then I read Becoming Family by Alicia Whistler. And this was a great women's fiction book, and it brought in a lot of emotions, a lot of uh, turns when it came to an emotional edge. And I, I just really loved that particular book because I love books that make you feel. And that's what I'm going to say about that one. Now, remember I mentioned that I read the Arrangement Trilogy by Kirsten Modglin, where I also was able to read If You're Reading This. Now... Based on what she says on her Facebook group, this book is not like any of her other ones. Most of Kirsten Moglin's books are psychological thrillers. This is more of a women's fiction domestic drama. And what happened in this particular case was a couple was about to get married and the husband died just before they said, I do. Well, the guest had been writing letters and a collection of letters was kept so that when the couple celebrated their one year anniversary, they would sit down, they would go away, they would sit down and they would read each and every one of these letters. Well, sadly, one of those letters was written by the husband. 
and she found out that he was nobody, no, nothing even remotely close to who she thought who she thought he was. And then she begins to worry about the manner of his death because something fishy is going on. Then I read uh, Perfect Parents by L.G. Davis, another women's fiction slash psychological thriller that was impossible to put down. It was a Bookature publication. And by the way, a lot of the books that I read are from Bookature. Now, is there anything such thing as a perfect parent? Of course there isn't. Do you want to know more about the book? Guess what? It's reviewed on this channel. Then I read, I think it was seven books by Alice Castle. And I think I might try to put all seven of them up at the same time. But let's name them. The Murder Mystery. The Murder Museum. The Murder Question. The Murder Plot. The Murder Walk. The Murder Club. And The Murder Hour. So I read those back to back to back to back. Really good books. But I also read My Big Fake Wedding by Jessica Hatch. And let me tell you, it's a great rom-com. Reminded me so much of um, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Well, this was kind of, the title alone makes you think about that. Then I read The Little House by the Sea by Tracy Rees. This was a little, this was a women fiction and the the protagonist had, I think this is the one where she was facing empty nest and, and she changes her life and she travels and all kinds of things happen that brings her life full circle and she finds a new way to be happy. Then I read Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins, Jenkins Reid. Now with T Carrie Soto is back. We find and um, I'm trying to think. Do I have this as print? I'm thinking I may have it. Okay. Anyway, Carrie Soto is back. Tennis player. She grew up watching her father play tennis. He was a tennis pro. By the age of six, he started to train her, and she became an excellent tennis player, the best, record after record after record. Well, a knee injury caused her retirement. So she was retired for six years after surgery, after rehab and all of that. And now she came back to tennis and she's determined to reclaim her title and to even um, get more accolades than she had already gotten. And I had this as an audiobook arc and I believe it had 11 narrators. And that was that's that's what made it really, really good. Then I read Childhood Sweetheart by Wendy Clark. And this was a psychological thriller. And we learn about a, a woman who goes back to her hometown, or I think, I know the guy's name is Tom, but one of them goes back to the hometown. I think it was the woman. And uh, something happened and she has a secret, but not only does she have a secret, his, no, he's the one that comes back. He lost his brother. I just had to think about it. He lost his brother when they were teenagers. And now he's back and he's angry. And something's going on with his mom and his mom needs his attention. And then as soon as he finishes taking care of his mom, he's going to leave. Well, the female protagonist in this story, she played a role in his life and his mother's life and even his brother's life before he died and his brother was a big bully when they were growing up i just had to think about it for a second because i'm not using notes then we had enola holmes and the elegant escapade by nancy springer i think it's book seven and the uh enola holmes is the little sister of sherlock and mycraft mycroft holmes and in the first six or seven books of the series, Enola Holmes isn't a little bit of a amateur sleuth, but she's, oh, there was this term. I should remember this term, but she was, it was the finder of lost souls, whatever that is. I, I, anyway, she had been doing things on her own. Well, in this particular book, she's working with Sherlock and I love it. Then I read Would You Rather by Allison Ashley. And when you look at the cover, you think it's a rom-com, but it was anything but. Really, really good book. 
I couldn't put this one down because I had to see where it was going to go, what these characters were up to, and why it was called Would You Rather. And that does play very well into the book as the book goes through. Then I read The X by S.E. Lines. Now, S.E. Lines writes great psychological thrillers, and they uh, this author did not let us down with The X. And let me tell you about that book. So with The X, our protagonist is pushing a stroller, and she runs into her ex. And when he looks down at the baby in the stroller, he thinks he's the father, and she lets him think she's the father. But it's a psychological thriller. So what leads the character to try to push pass off the baby as his baby? Is it his baby? And if it, that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to spoil it for you. Then I had The Threat Collectors by Shanna J. Edwards and Allison Richmond. What I like about this book is you have a group of women and one of the women, well, you have two women. I, I'm not a group of women. You have two women. One woman was stitching with the embroidery maps so that it could help people escape what was going on in that time. Another woman was a quilt maker and there was some years and some distance between them and how they eventually met. And it was a very, very good read. Um, if you look at the cover, you see a black woman and a white woman. And that makes it something that's really pivotal with regard to being a part of history. Then we have Take My Husband by Ellen Meister. This was, this was irreverently hilarious. It starts off with our character getting a phone call that your husband was in an accident. Oh, that's great. I hope he's dead. Yeah. Yeah. So she spends most of the book trying to think of ways to rush his demise. We're going to leave it at that. Then I read The Beach Party by Amy Shepard. Now, in The Beach Party, you have a group of teenagers who were, you know, rebel rousing, making noise, drinking, doing this, that, and the other. Well, one of those teenagers ends up dead. But the question is, did anybody see it coming? And if they did, how come they didn't do anything about it? And now time has passed, and now it's time to bring things to rights. Then we have Death Down the Aisle by Verity Bright. Now, Verity Bright is a pseudonym for a husband and wife writing team. And with Death Down the Aisle, we have a historical fiction with our character who, not historical fiction, Cozy mystery. I, I'm very sleepy. I'm sorry. We have a cozy mystery and every time she thinks that she's going to get away from solving crimes, something happens. And first it was the person that was supposed to officiate at the wedding. And then there's something else that happened that made that wedding not so smooth. And then, like I said, our character became an amateur sleuth yet again. Then I had the book that I had mentioned as my favorite for August, which is My Name is On a Judge. And this book was really, really, really good because you had a, a woman named, a, a young woman named Ona who became a slave. She was born a slave, but her life seemed normal. But around 10 years of age, she was taken into George and Martha Washington's home as the personal maid. First, she started off as the nanny to their children, even though she was only 10 herself, and eventually the personal maid to Martha Washington. But then you have Stella in modern times, and Stella finds an old diary, and she starts to read about Ona's experiences, including when Ona escaped slavery. Then we had The Nanny by Ruth Held. Now, with The Nanny, you have our, I want to say Sarah. I'm not going to try to call the character's name. She was a nanny in Indonesia, I believe it was. Anyway, she was a nanny, and one of the children came up missing. The baby's name was Chloe. Fast forward, and now she's married with a little five-year-old daughter. I think the little girl's name is Alice. And somebody shows up at her door because 
they take in a lodger. And when the lot, the woman that they were going to rent the room out, she looked very familiar. Is this baby Chloe? Who is this woman? Her name is Joanna. Who is she? And what is she doing in their life? Really, really good book. Then we have Murder in the Library by Katie Gale. And this was, uh, I wanted to, I can't call the uh, character's name, but it was an, uh, one of my cozy mysteries. And I'm always, always, always reading cozy mysteries. I'm just trying to put this in order. Okay. Um, this particular one was, it was supposed to be a book signing and a, a book reading. You know, the author was going to talk about his book. Well, he ends up dead. And now it becomes a matter, a matter of, is our character going to solve the murder or is the, are the police going to do it? Then we have A Secret in the Family by Leah Mercer. And here we have a letter or a picture, something that was found by our character who, in the midst of taking care of her father, realized that her father had a secret for years. And she is determined to uncover that secret to bring that matter to rights. And that was a secret in the family. Then we have my favorite book of the month, which was The Lucky One by Jessica Payne. And I know I don't do well with characters' names if I don't look at notes, but in this particular book, this girl escaped a serial killer. I, and I know the girl that died, her name was August, and the other girl's name will probably come to me. And somehow she survived that serial killer. Well, she comes home because her dad, she uh, she had a deal with a situation with her father. And another one of their friends, Esme, was killed. Well, guess what? That serial killer that she escaped wasn't done with her. That's why she was called the lucky one. Why did I say it was my favorite book of August? Pretty much my favorite. The action never stopped. The tension never stopped. It never let up. And it kept me turning page after page after page until I was done. And it looks like the last book, and I, I just want to pull up my spreadsheet really quick. This was If Nietzsche Were a Narwhal by Justin Gregg. If Nietzsche Were a Narwhal. Well, quite naturally, I had no idea who Nietzsche was. I'm still bringing up my spreadsheet because I just want to verify was it okay i'm giving it to you out of order the lucky one was the last book i read but i also read if nietzsche were a nahal nahal nietzsche was a philosopher i think in the 1700s or the 1800s and he was brilliant but brilliant to the point of losing his mind and living the rest of his life as a patient and not as a philosopher and what our author, Justin Gregg, did is it kept comparing certain human actions to animal instinct to show that animals are brilliant and people are stupid. Irreverent, I know. Delightful, indeed. So that is if Nietzsche were a Nahuatl. So let me go ahead and edit all of this together. I know it's a long video. It's probably going to be 35, 40 minutes, but that's okay because it, it needs to be done. I need to have my wrap-ups every single month and as mentioned earlier in this video i have already read i guess 19 books i wasn't writing them down but my spreadsheet told me it was 19. so september's off to a great start and we'll see what happens with with that uh, my next endeavor when i come back to this channel thank you for watching i'll see you next time Bye bye